So you just bought Odin Validator, or maybe you're looking to add it to a project. In this video, we're going to take a look at the process of adding the Validator to a project, getting it set up, and do a short tour of the most commonly used features. Once you have the Validator added to your project, either from the Asset Store or from the Odin Inspector site, you'll see the Scene widget in the bottom left of your Scene view. Click it to open the Validator window. When you do, you'll see one validation result and a fix for that result. You can fix the result by opening the Setup Wizard. From there, we can click on the Validator Setup button and navigate to the Profiles page. A profile will configure what does and does not get scanned. You can toggle on and off the default options or add additional options with a plus button next to each category. Later on in the video, we'll look at excluding a folder of assets, but you can exclude items from a scan just as easily as you can add them, just use the Exclude button. You can also create additional profiles for different workflows. For example, an artist may have very different validation needs compared to a level designer and each role can create a unique validation profile. Profiles are stored as scriptable objects and are easily shared with everyone in the team. If you'd like to make changes that will only affect your personal workflow, you can click on For This Machine and override any of the shared settings. Moving on, we get to the Rules page. The validator uses both rules and validators. Rules can be toggled on and off and configured while validators are always on. Out of the box, Odin Validator comes with a growing set of built-in rules and validators. To toggle rules, simply click the checkbox next to the name of the rule. Some rules will allow additional configuration, and clicking on the gear icon will bring up a window with any options to adjust behavior of a given rule. Next up is the Events page, where we can hook the validator into events to automatically run a validation scan. This adds another layer of automation, making it harder to miss potential problems or sources of error in your project. For example, we can toggle the on play event. When we do this, we can set the profile to be used for the scans, as well as set behaviors for when warnings or errors are discovered. If we also toggle on flash screen and press play, we can see the validator reacting to the play event. The last page has a wide range of configuration options to customize the behavior of the validator. By default, Odin validator hardly does anything in the background. It will only ever validate new changes you make, but you can also configure it to validate scenes when they are loaded or validate assets when the project loads. But a word of warning, depending on the size of your project and the validation profile, validating all assets in the background may lead Unity to stutter as the validator will have to load each asset to validate them. The scene widget gives real-time feedback as you work. By default, it is shown at the bottom left of the scene view. You can also toggle it off or only have it shown when validation issues have been discovered. We can also adjust the behavior of the validator window. In particular, we can customize what happens when validation results are selected or clicked on. When you're done configuring the validator, you'll see that the introduction error that we first got has now turned green. With the configuration complete, we can now start working with the validator, scanning our project, and resolving issues. Clicking on the validator widget in the scene view will open the validator window, or you can also open it from the tools menu. At the top of the validator window, you'll see your currently selected profile. Here, you can easily select a different profile or create a new profile by clicking on the plus button and giving the profile a new name. Moving along, we've got a play and a fast forward button. Both will start a scan, but the play button will start a background scan, leaving you free to continue to work, while the fast forward button will complete any ongoing scan or start a new one, but won't let you work while it scans. The validate everything button is shown with a globe icon. This will validate everything, including closed scenes, which cannot be validated in the background. If the validator didn't scan your project, now is a good time to run a scan and see what possible errors it can find. As you can see in my sample project, there are a lot of results, just with the built-in validators and rules, which is pretty common. If you look closely, most of the errors are coming from third-party assets. Now we could go through and fix all those issues, and depending on your workflow, you might need to. But this can also be a good example of when excluding a folder from a scan could be a good idea. So let's exclude the plugin folder, which is where I put all my downloaded assets. If we rescan the project, we should have a much more manageable number of results. Alternatively to excluding the plugins folder, we could toggle off all the asset folders and then click the include dependencies button next to the open scenes. What we get with this is no scanning of the folders themselves. Rather, we just scan the assets used in the open scenes. With a fewer number of results, we can see that on a spawner object, there is a null item in the list. And this would be easy to miss until an error is thrown. The validator that picked up on this error also has a built-in fix, which we can see in the bottom right of the validator window. If we click on the execute button, 
the missing element is removed from the list. Likewise, we could also have manually removed the item or in this particular case, added a prefab to fill the list item. As you start to decide what to scan, it might also be a good idea to create new profiles. Maybe an artist only needs to scan a model or texture folder, while a level designer might need to scan prefabs and scenes included in the build options. Profiles are really just a shortcut or easy way to change what gets scanned. And again, you can create profiles by clicking on the profile on the top left of the validator window, clicking the plus button and giving the new profile a name. On the left of the validator window are several tabs. The first allows us to filter the results. These toggles don't change what gets scanned, only the results that are shown, which is handy if you're trying to fix a particular type of issue. The window also gives counts, which can be interesting and useful to see patterns in your project. This is the filter assets tab, which we've looked at and does change what assets are scanned. If a scan is taking longer than you'd like, you can try to create a more directed scan by including or excluding assets. Working our way down through the tabs, we get our rules, we get our events and a configuration tabs and access to all the options, just like we did in the setup wizard. So how do we get more use out of the Odin validator in your project? Well, the easiest and fastest way to add validation is to add one of the several validation attributes. For example, in my spawner object, I might want to make sure that all the objects in the list are assets and not accidentally a scene object. So we can open the script and then add serenix.odinspector namespace at the top. Then we can add the assets only attribute to the list of game objects. And while we're at it, we might also want to add the minimum value attribute to the spawn delay to ensure we aren't accidentally using negative values or have no delay at all. Saving the file and returning to Unity shows us a couple new validation results. One of our prefabs was a scene object and our scene delay hadn't been set. At the moment, there are at least 16 attributes that work with Odin Validator. Some are built into Unity, like require component and range, while others like validate input allow you to add significant validation functionality. But if you want to get the most out of the validator, you'll likely want to write your own custom rules and validators. And we've created a series of videos and written tutorials showing you exactly how to do that. You can click the video links on the screen or check the links in the description below to learn more.